Sitting in your lounge rooms tonight, it might be easy to forget the housing crisis in this country. It's not just impacting the young and poor, but older, educated Australians. And their stories are compelling. You know, it's really hard putting two kids to bed in a tent. It's the middle of the night, and by daybreak, the situation hasn't improved for this young mum. Day in the life of a homeless family living in Australia during the rental crisis. My kids woke up terribly because they slept terribly in the stormy, stormy weather. But enough of that, it was time for breakfast, which consisted of one banana. More storm clouds. Rained a lot that day. Susanna yeah, Taylor and her family live in a tent. Unable to get rental accommodation, she TikToks her family's struggles. And here's Lila just trying to feed me. She's very There's Lila and baby Luna and a cold. I can tell you this, being sick in its head <laughs> is not fun. The 22-year-old Queensland mum looks after her kids while her young husband tries to look for work and somewhere to live around Bundaberg. Public housing just isn't available, but right now there are other pressing issues. I can't find wipes. It's Labor Day and we need wipes. And I don't know what's open and I can't really just go driving around because I can't just, you know, waste fuel. Everything I own is wet. I have black mould growing in my, my little situation up there. Um, nothing will dry. Just down the road from Susanna, in Burham Heads near Harvey Bay, Ian Heron has also been forced to live a life in a tent, unable to get rental accommodation. I'd settle for a roof over my head, somewhere warm and dry for me and my little dog, that's all. There are no rentals available, not for low-income people like myself. Partially blind, the 60-year-old found himself homeless when his rent skyrocketed and his disability pension just wasn't enough to afford anything. I'm at my wit's end, I don't know what to do. In the last 10 weeks, I've moved 11 times. Halfway across the country... I'd never believe this would happen in Australia, that you, you can't find a house to rent. Cindy Willis fears she too will be homeless after her landlord recently put her rental on the market. It almost makes me feel sick, just the worry. I do stay awake quite late thinking about it. Even though she works, she has applied for... Probably 20... Rentals. And every time she turns up to a new listing, she's not alone. Yesterday, for instance, there were around 50 people. On the central coast of New South Wales, Monique Leon is home from work. She rents a very basic room in a shared house. Monique, you've got a good job and you're university educated. How did it get to this? I never thought, like when I had kids, I made sure I was financially stable. And even when you think everything is so secure, it can completely fall apart. The 49-year-old mum has two teenage boys, but they clearly can't live in here. So they stay with their dad, even though the parents have joint custody. They just need their mum. She too has been trying hard to find somewhere for them all to live. Probably about 20 in the last month. But rents have gone through the roof. The ones we're looking at, you know, they're now $700 when they used to be 500. And lately, real estate agents and landlords, she says, are asking for many months of bond and rent in advance. I consider myself on a healthy wage, but I can't come up with 10 grand to pay three months in advance. So her world is in storage. There's, there's my life. How long has this been locked up for? Uh, since October. And her life with her kids at home is on hold. It's just the day-to-day -day stuff. I want to make lunches. I want to be a mum. This is my job. They're going through puberty. It's just not normal to not have it's your mum. Really, um... And it's really upsetting for you to have to go through and... I, I hate it. And, yeah. and uh, I had to present to John Hunter Hospital not so long ago. I had a skin condition that was built from stress. I had a, a bit of a meltdown as well. Um, popped myself straight into acute mental health because it's a hard thing to deal with. 
because I'm supposed to be the steady rock for my kids. Back in Adelaide, Angela Kiriazis is desperately trying to avoid living on the streets. The house got sold on me and they've now I have 20 days to find a new house for me and my five-year-old daughter. The single mum can't work and suffers from depression and anxiety. Keep getting rejected being a single mother on the disabled pension. And public housing is just not there. They said that they can't help, that I would still be two years away until I even get a house. We just don't have enough low-cost rental homes right across Australia. We've got a vacancy rate down to 1.1%, which is... Kate Colvin is from Everybody's term. Home, a coalition of welfare organisations pushing a national campaign to fix the housing crisis. We're calling on the government to invest in 25,000 social housing properties a year to really get those rentals into the communities where they're needed so that every family has a home, has a roof over their head. Make it easier for people to own a home. You know, at times like this when everything's so hard, coming up with a huge deposit is a problem for a lot of people and that puts them out of the market. When they're paying such a high rent, how are you supposed to save for a deposit? I don't know where we're going to go. If I don't find a house for me and my daughter, pretty much we will be living on the street or in a hotel. It doesn't feel like the lucky country, does it? No, it doesn't. And no matter which way I work my budget, it's not gonna work. Who's off the bed? Who's off the bed? You are. I feel cheated, I feel robbed. I worked hard in my younger life. Help, help us. Do something, build some houses. It's not fair, is it? In a positive footnote, Susanna's husband has now found work and they've signed up to go into public housing.